Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend, Anna Marguerite Brande Marte. I'm having her on the show today to talk about horror and, I guess, life. And um, a lot of you may remember she's been on before. She's a uh, psychic medium, and she's a big horror fan. And she's an absolute sweetheart, very loyal and dedicated to both horror and people. And that's what makes Anna so awesome. So, yeah, here is my new interview with Anna Marguerite Brande Marte. What's up, Anna? Hey, I'm good, hon. Oh. It's been a clusterfuck of a year, but I'm hanging in there. Good. I see you doing very well, though. <clears throat> I'm I'm doing well getting people to interview, but that's about it. I'm going through a toxic environment at home. I don't want to. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't want to elaborate on the podcast right now, but it's been pretty bad. Well, I hope things get better for you in a long run. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it should. It should. So, how are things with you? Uh, just been busy. Um, trying to support and my readings and try to get out there. And I'm trying to do a multi team right now. So, I've been really having my hands full with a lot of projects. Are you at least getting involved in the uh, convention scene out there? Oh yeah, of course. Um, I just had I just had one. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, I haven't had one in a couple of weeks, so I'm going to be on two radio shows, the one at the end of October and the one at, in November, so at least that's better than nothing. <coughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm going to start getting involved in behind the scenes next year. I was supposed to do it this year until my mom got injured at work, and a lot of stuff happened, but... I'm going to get involved. I'm going to a Comic Con on Sunday in Santa yeah, Rosa. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm hoping um, I can meet the organizer and get involved because he does four conventions in the Bay Area and two in Sacramento, and I really want to get involved next year because I'm just tired of going to the celebrities' table and they don't remember me because they do so many interviews and right. their handlers are such dickheads a lot of the time. Yeah, but I do. Oh well, yeah, there you go. What are you gonna do? It's been happening since last year. Before that, it never happened. Everyone always remembered me, but I, I just, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. They're under like some kind of a, an Illuminati contract at conventions. You know, they say uh, they can only acknowledge this person or that person. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just weird. It needs to stop, and someone needs to expose it eventually. Yeah, it does. You know, people have, like, added, and they think they're all that, not themselves, and they don't care. They have interviews with people, remember you, and it's just kind of wrong, because people look up to do these interviews, and I thought I really appreciate it, and then they're like, oh, well, I actually don't remember you, but are you serious? But you should, like, do that to people. It's, like, kind of wrong. Yeah, it happened this year. You know, I interviewed Jeanette Goldstein, and then a couple weeks later, I went to the convention, and she barely remembered me. And then she was like, oh, that's right, yes, because she, I, I was the only podcast interview she's done, you know, since, you know, a couple weeks before and stuff. Um, I bet Jaretta Jaretta, she remembered me, thank God. Right. And um, I don't know, we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens, but I'm just, yeah, I'm just tired of that. I, I think I'm, I'm, I think what I'm going to do now, uh, when, when I let people know that I interviewed them, that I'm, I'm going to be there and stuff, I think I'm going to send them a reminder after we're done and say, you know, can yeah, you, definitely. yeah, let, 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 let your handler know that I'm coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. This way they remember always, you know, well, they should remember you anyway. I mean. But I guess that's how some people are. They're so busy about themselves that they all 
really care about other people, who they mean, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird thing. But, um, I, I did a podcast with somebody the other day. We were talking about the movie The Tourist Trap. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Do you like that movie? I don't see that. It came out in 79. It was a Charlie Band Empire movie. It was PG, but scary as hell. Because. Is it really? Yeah. Um. It's about this uh, this this town sheriff who like lures tourists, young teenage tourists, into his home, and he's got this room with all these scary mannequins who pop out, and he's got like silverware that's like flying out of the cabinet. Oh my god, it's scary! Wow, I have to check it out. Yeah, I love. I don't know if you ever pay attention to this, but I love. The, the, the media home entertainment VHS uh, horror movies that came out in the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, yeah, I used to love VHS. They don't do them anymore. They Blu-ray and DVD. <laughs> that was classic. Oh, but you can get them on eBay. Oh, yeah. I should have saved all my horror movies that I had on VHS. I never even thought about it. Yeah. But media, they got some great ones. Uh, to All a Good Night. I just love that slasher movie that takes place at Christmas. Yeah. I, I interviewed Jennifer Runyon from that twice. And the first time I interviewed her, she told me she didn't know that Harry Rings was a porn star. And I said to oh, her, geez. I said to her, uh, how'd you find out? Did he take it out in front of everybody? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. She laughed. She thought it was funny. She said no, and if he did, I probably would have cried. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's a great movie. I actually found three more people from that movie, and I hope they respond when I reach out to them. Um, oh, I'm sure they will. Yeah, I, I hope so, because I want to talk to more people about that movie for my Christmas shows in December and stuff. I don't know if I'm going to top... Uh, this year, like I like like um, I did last year with the Halloween shows. I mean, last year was a right. fluke. I was getting three, four interviews a day every day for like that whole month. And this year, it's been really weird. Like I have some, you know, on some days or every other day, and I've had a few people reschedule on me and stuff. I, I don't know if I'll top it, but I hope I at least equal it. You know? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you will. I mean, you got this far. Yeah. Yeah. But we shall see. Um, I interviewed Linda Day George today from Beyond Evil. Hi. Yeah. She said, oh, don't you just love those green lasers coming out of my eyes? I wish I had that power for real. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wishes that. Yeah. Yeah, she was really cool. And, um, God, she's been in some great horror films. She was in that movie Ants, which the box cover scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm going to look at that ant. Yeah, she's naked and she's got ants all over her. Oh, geez. Yep, and they were real, too. She didn't sight for so eyes. <laughs> they were real, too, yeah. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. I wouldn't put up with that. No, no, no. It was the 70s. <laughs> oh, I guess nothing better back then. Yeah. It, yeah, because back then, I don't know, they just didn't have the money to actually make them up, so they had to get real ones, you know? Same thing with arachnophobia. Uh, they did, like, half real and half fake, you know? Once they couldn't get the fake... Once they couldn't get, you know... Uh, once they couldn't make any more fake ones, they had to just go get real ones in the Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, I also love the Vestron horror films, like Trick or Treats, uh, Curtains, the Canadian one. Right. Bloody Birthday. Oh, those are great ones. You know. Have you seen any new good horror lately, though? Oh, of course. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, let's. Oh, I just saw couple of them, and I can't think of it. Um, 
Well, it of course that was that was really good. I need to see I was very one. impressed with it. Uh, the second it was actually scarier than the first one. And I would be jumping huh. on my seat quite a few times. So I was actually really impressed with it. Nice. I gotta go see it before it's out of theaters. Oh you gotta. It's it's fantastic. I think yeah, maybe on on Tuesday. Because uh, we have five dollar discount day, maybe after my last interview on Tuesday next week, I'll go see it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, I'm to uh, I'm getting ready to watch that movie. Uh, it's uh, Itsy Bitsy, the Spider movie. I haven't. Yet, and I really don't care for spiders, so it's like, mm, mm, mm. so yuck. <laughs> oh, here's let me, let me ask you this Have you seen Joker? No, but I heard it's fantastic, and I want to see it so bad. I heard it's really good. Mm hmm. Yeah, I. I I, and you know me, I don't get offended, but I got emotionally offended when I found out about this movie because it just, it just angers me about how this is the, the direction Hollywood has gone by doing a movie about a villain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to read it. I know there was other, um, who's that other one? Who knows the, I don't know, it's that movie where uh, she comes and chases children and captures children and a lot of stuff that kills them. I just can't think of the name of it. Huh. Uh, damn, it's like right on top of the tip of my tongue. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, but yeah, I saw it, it was fantastic this year. So, I I actually just looked up the schedule. That's not in theaters over here anymore. Damn it! No, I'm pretty sure um, in a few months it'll be out on tape real quick. Yeah, I'm not worried. So I'll I'll check it out when it does. Uh, I might have Todd Sheets on the show soon. That's fantastic. Yeah, he's got uh, clown clownado out. And stuff. I, I have never seen a, a Todd Sheets movie, but I had a, a vlogger on the show a couple times in the last year who told me uh, he's her favorite uh, horror director. And I'm like, huh, really? I was like, I should reach out to him and talk to him about horror. So I did. So we're trying to yeah. schedule it, you know? Yeah. Well, this is not a horror movie. What, I didn't even get, was it the summertime? What did you think of the new Chucky? I didn't see the new Chucky, but... Really? You haven't? I, I don't watch a lot of new stuff nowadays and stuff. It's it's just... I mean, I do want to see it, though, but, the, you know, just the platforms that are available, just... It's, it, right. it gets confusing. You know? Uh, well, see, I just thought it wasn't bad at all, but I don't like that they read this at all. I mean, it's all ridiculous. I understand they're trying to make the doll look, you know, to the future type thing, but they really got to stop touching these hearts. Leave them alone. They I really annoy me. If you can't do it right, don't do it wrong. Right. It's just, oh my God, it's just, you know, it's, it's starting to become about money in, in so many cases. It is. It's like they're rushing, they thought in it. They just try to come up with anything and remake. Uh, what's another one? Pet Cemetery wasn't too bad. Pet was actually very twisted, which I was very surprised. <laughs> so I have to give it credit for the new one. So I give it a B. Too <laughs> bad. <laughs> but um, do you see it? See Stephen King come out with all these horror movies and he's remaking everything. So they're like, oh, okay, so it did really well, so let's do all the other ones. But why can't you come up with a, 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 a 
or a part or, you know, why did, like, this family, like, go crazy stuff and, you know, like, maybe add another story or you know, stuff like that, but they just don't want to do more. Right. You know? They're thinking about remaking stuff because <coughs> want to re- the werewolf and upgrade it, which I get it. Yeah. You know? And they could have been really good werewolf because they didn't have all the all the technology then and but let's see, let's let's see. I wanna see them make a a I hope they make a new scary then upgrade it. That would be fantastic. But instead of doing a whole redo of Silver Bullet, won't you add a like a different story that was from Silver Bullet but to something quite different. Yeah. You know what I'm but yeah. yeah movies and the old horror classics really drive me crazy. Yeah. I I actually been trying to get somebody on from Pet Cemetery for a while now and I've had no luck. I want Denise Crosby on. I've I've reached out to her all the time. I've interviewed her her sister in law, Spice Williams, but I haven't heard back from her. That's awesome. No, I said I haven't heard back from her. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know, maybe someday, but yeah. Oh my God, I, I think the last time we talked, I was telling you I was going to make that horror show pilot. Right. Yeah, so the producer, who was my, my mentor and friend in stand-up comedy, he fucked me over big time on that. He he told me that he wasn't going to be showing up that day, and me and my friends, we were all ready, set to go. I wrote a hilarious script. And he just fucked it over, and we, we had no way other way to film it, you know, without his camera. And so I'm putting it on the back burner. Hopefully I'm going to go down to the Bay Area and maybe get a cable access station to uh, produce it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. But that's like my, my, my main dream. I want to be a horror host, and I want to be uh, politi- well, you know what? can see you doing it because you know you, you try so hard I see you go to conventions and yeah. you try to promote yourself you get all these actors and actresses that I can't even believe that you even have on the show I think that's really incredible and impressive and why not everybody else is doing it why can't you you know what I mean yeah I just I'm so astounded at all the people I've been able to get and stuff. I hope I can do it, you know, and I want, I want, I want to be a horror host more than anything. I watch the shows. And I'm like, I want to do that. You know, and I want to do different things. I want to do stuff that's controversial. I want to give a, a new audience, you know, I want to get a new audience and give them something they haven't seen before. Yeah. Well, that's like, you know, with the tag harmony, so many psychics, there's so many, Mediums out there, and a lot of them have been on paranormal TV, have written books, have been on radio shows, and there's so much competition that it's so hard to be recognized because it it it, it, it makes you want to put yourself do this no more. But on um, what? Why do I want to put this talent down just because there's other competition out? There? If I got this group, I got this and show everybody what I can do. No, but it's to just to get recognized. Right. So, you know, so, and I'm trying to build um, a paranormal um, team, but I'm right now just doing it for myself where, you know, I'm going to show people you don't need a team. Do it on your own where... You can go discover things. You can go tell stories. Yeah. Start, you know, doing things and showing people look I'm great, able to do things. I don't need people, stuff like that. But it's hard because it, there's so much in in New Jersey that, you know, it's very hard to just get recognized. I understand where you're coming from because there's her host, uh, Dead Doll, there's um, um, this other radio show 
I forget the name of, but they wear like masks and all that crazy stuff. And yeah. So you guys are in competition too, but they don't look very well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know me, he doesn't support you anyway. Yeah. I did uh, an interview with uh, the horror host uh, Penny Dreadful, and she, you know, in Boston, she put her show on cable access back in 2006, 2005 or something. And within months, it was all over the New England Seaborg. I mean, she got success really fast about it. And she's so, she's so sweet. She's so modest about it, too. You know, she just thinks, oh, you know, it, it, that's old news. You know, you know, anybody can do that now and probably, you know, be more successful than me and stuff. I was like, no, that's quite an accomplishment, you know? Yeah. You got this. I see you be you do it just fine. Let people push it down, you know? Yeah. I just hope, you know, that my, my family can just, you know, get help. That's what, all I'm thinking about too. Yeah. yeah. When I was you know, I mean, before I was born in the Bay Area, we had horror hosts. And they would do things that no horror hosts do now. They would uh, give happy birthday greetings um, to fans who write into the show. And right. nobody does that anymore because these shows are pre-recorded like the day before or something. Or the week before. And I want to bring that back. I just think that, you know, um, horror hosts have, have a responsibility to the audience yeah, I hear you. That's how I feel about it. And speaking of horror hosts, I don't want to mention the name and stuff, but uh -huh. have you gotten any further harassment from that one? No, not at all. Good. I haven't talked in, in more than a year now. Good. Yeah. That uh, certain host... Um, sends me requests uh, for um, uh, for like page likes and stuff, right? I just don't respond. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just don't respond. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shut the door on that. So. <laughs> yeah. How's New Jersey overall? I heard they, um, oh yeah, they got they got chiller, they got chiller con this weekend, and I've had a couple guests come on and promote. Chiller con, that. Chiller con, it's like the most legendary convention in in New Jersey. I wish I could have gotten into that. Yeah. Oh yeah, they got everybody in horror and just pop culture in general there. Um, Today I had Terry Winkless, who wrote The Howling. He's going to be there this weekend. Oh, man. It's creepy as hell. Tomorrow. That's a good ass movie. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow, I got the Moore Twins from Friday the 13th, the final chapter, because they're in it. They're at the con. Right. And I got Tom Waits. Thomas Waits, you know, from The Thing and The Warriors. Yeah. Yep. That's just a little preview that I'm giving out there. So it's going to be awesome. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so, what, so what are you doing at um, the, the conventions you're going to? Are you just doing press? Oh, uh, no. I'm just doing my... Um, I'm sponsoring the cell candle shop and my candles and my stuff that I make and, and I do my tarot card reading. Nice. Nice. And have you, have you, oh. have you freaked anybody out with those readings? No. Well, sometimes when I get, um, people to come in and interrupt from the other side and they don't expect it because a lot of spirits sometimes they have unfinished business and they um, you know if the message is really strong they need to talk to somebody they will interrupt like tarot card reading oh. so that's the only part where I uh, freak them out the most with when they get right you know, they start to cry and they know I'm doing my job <laughs> 
yeah, I could, I could just, you know, I could actually just imagine you doing that, you know. I see wedding bells in your future, you and Willie Nelson. <laughs> That's a Simpsons reference. Anna? Yeah, I'm right here. I'm sorry. I'm out for a minute. I was making a Simpsons reference. I thought you hung up on me. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. I was making a Simpsons reference. Um, so, uh, anything uh, you, you have, so anything overall you want to plug that you got coming up? Uh, no. No. Um, no. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, but um, no, I don't have I don't have anything too much coming up, really. I've just been trying to sponsor my sponsor, geez, try to help my colleagues on Instagram and stuff like that. And uh, like I said, the only two two up are the two rentals, which I will be uh, posted. Do my end for the show. Pretty much it for right now. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I hope it goes very well for you, hun. Yeah, I hope so too. Like, like I said, like how you feel about things. I try to push my, I try to push myself as much as I can, and um, and that's all. So. Well. I hope it goes very successful, hun, and I thank you for coming on again, and I will... Oh, any, any time, you know, you know you always have me as a guest. Oh, yes, and you have yourself a great night over there. Yes, you too. Thank you, Brian. Okay. I hope you do well. Thank you, hun. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Anna Marguerite Brande Marte. Isn't she a sweetheart? She is. I just love horror fans. Most of the time. Some of them are actual jerks out there, but she is one of the good ones. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.